This is Echo 3, and let's discuss the history of the C-7 Aerospace Division's J-20 Juno basic jet engine. Like humanity's first jet engines, the Juno is a turbojet engine with poor performance compared to more advanced jet engines. On screen is a craft similar to one proposed by Lockheed in 1939. The Lockheed L-133 was offered to be the United States' first jet fighter. It was to be powered by two Lockheed L-1000 axial flow turbojets, producing 23 kilonewtons of thrust each, which is very similar to the 20 kilonewtons generated by the game's J-20 Juno. Ultimately, though, the L-133 Starjet's design was deemed too kerbal, or I mean too radical for the United States Army Air Force. They began looking into more traditional looking planes, like this Bell P-59 Aerocomet. The Aerocomet used two General Electric J-31 GE-5 centrifugal flow turbojet engines producing 8.9 kilonewtons of thrust each. General Electric was allowed to copy early British jet engines in order to manufacture this one. I believe the J-20 Juno received the J in its name because many American jets have it in their military designation. Due to the secret nature of the Americans developing their first jet fighter, when the P-59 was being moved around on the ground, it was fitted with a fake propeller. Testing and development did not go well for the plane, though. The J-31 engine just did not have enough power. A newer prop-driven aircraft like the P-47 were found to outperform it. Some of the aircraft were destroyed during testing. Only six are known to exist today. One of them is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. A J-31 engine is also on display there. Both of these early designs lost out to the P-80 Shooting Star to become the United States' first operational jet fighter. Across the Atlantic, Germany was also working on several different jet aircraft that were to be powered by the Junkers Jumo 004 axial flow turbojet engine. I believe the Juno's engine's name was also inspired by this iconic engine. Similar to how the J-20 Juno is the first jet engine available in the tech tree, the Junkers Jumo was the first production turbojet engine to reach operational use. The Jumo is 3.86 meters long, 0.81 meters high, and weighs 719 kilograms. The Juno engine, by comparison, is far smaller and only weighs 250 kilograms. The 8 states axial compressor Jumo produces 8.8 kilonewtons of thrust, while the more powerful Juno has 20 kilonewtons of static thrust at sea level. The engine was fitted onto a variety of planes. Captured engines even found their way onto French planes, like the Arsenal VG-70, and copies were used on the USSR's Yak-15. Germany used the engine on their HO-229, as highlighted in my previous video. The HE-162, the AR-234, and probably most famously on the ME-262. The ME-262 was the first operational jet-powered fighter plane. Its development like the American L-133 started before Germany invaded Poland. One of the early changes to the design of the ME-262 was to move the engines to pods mounted under the wings. This was due to delays in the development and production of the UMO engine. The change had the added benefit of making maintenance easier. The swept wings were more a product of correctly positioning the center of lift in relation to the center of mass as the Yumo engine turned out to be heavier than aircraft designers had originally anticipated. The swept wings had the unintended benefit of helping the plane perform better as it entered transonic speeds. One aerodynamics expert, Adolf Busemann, originally proposed the wings be swept 35 degrees instead of just 18.5. 35 degrees happens to be what the American F-86 Sabre and Soviet MiG-15 would end up using. On a side note, Adolf Busman ended up immigrating to the United States as part of Operation Paperclip. The Yumo 004A engine was not suitable for full seal production, so the B variant was engineered. The second variant used less hard to come by materials like nickel and high quality steel. This resulted in the engine requiring much more frequent maintenance and being much more prone to failures. All told, as many as 8,000 engines may have been produced before the war in Europe ended. Interestingly, the earliest prototypes of the plane used a conventional landing gear setup like most prop planes. 
production models used a tricycle arrangement like this one I'm building. The plane weighed 3,795 kilograms empty and had a gross weight of 6,473 kilograms. It had a top speed of 900 kilometers an hour. That converts to 250 meters per second. Its service ceiling was 11,450 meters, which is comparable to what most planes using the Juno engine can achieve. The ME-262 was thought to be an easy plane for pilots to learn. The lack of a propeller meant that there was no issue with torque. You can see one of my single-engine propeller tutorials on that. The cockpit also provided good visibility. Five replica ME-262s were made by the American ME-262 project. They used the modern General Electric CJ610 turbojet engine. There are three that are known to be airworthy. The first went to a private owner in the United States, another to the Messerschmitt Foundation in Germany, and a two-seat variant to the Collings Foundation in Massachusetts. The latter offers flight training, but one must have an FAA private pilot license or greater with a multi-engine rating and current third-class medical. Lastly, I would like to highlight the German AR-234. It too used the UMO engine and was mostly used for reconnaissance. The only surviving AR-234 is a bomber variant that I am demonstrating. Depending on the ordnance load, sometimes a very Kerbal approach to takeoff was required. The plane could do a rocket-assisted takeoff using twin jettisonable liquid-fueled rockets, one under each wing. If you'd like to see this plane, it is at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center near Dulles International Airport. Other versions of the plane used four BMW 003B engines instead. Using these engines freed more UO engines for the ME-262. This also increased the plane's thrust and probably its top speed. Thanks for joining me for this discussion about the J-20 Juno engine and some of humanity's first jet-powered aircraft. I'll see you next time.